All right, guys. Well, it finally happened. NVIDIA has just announced or unveiled three new graphics cards as part of their 20 series family featuring the new Turing GPU architecture. Very exciting stuff. I'm gonna quickly run down the core specs of each of the cards, uh, but the main focus of this video is going to be the new Founders Edition card slash cooler uh, because it's vastly different than pretty much anything we've seen from a, a reference card from NVIDIA in the past. But some quick bullet points here before we dive into the finer details. All three of these cards are featuring NVIDIA's new RTX technology, which basically integrates uh, real-time ray tracing into the rendering process to create much more realistic images. And that's mainly due to uh, how the lighting, shadows, and reflections um, are rendered and how they operate. NVIDIA showed us quite a few demos of RTX in action, and they were pretty impressive. Particularly for me, the Battlefield demo was unbelievable. It was really kind of mind-blowing, and it definitely sets a new bar. It's also worth noting that devs have to add support for RTX in their games in order for the technology to take effect. Thankfully, it looks like we're starting off with nearly a couple dozen games uh, with RTX support added in, um, which is quite exciting, and I'm sure that list is gonna grow as time goes on. But let's quickly go over the specs of these three cards, starting with the RTX 2070, which is, of course, the successor to the GTX 1070. Uh, it's got 2,304 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1,410 megahertz, a boost of 1,710. Asterisk here, because the new Founders Edition cards are gonna come factory overclocked. So you might potentially see the, the FE version of the card perform faster than some of the base models that, that are released from add-in board partners. And you've also got eight gigs of GDDR6 memory with a memory speed of 14 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus, 448 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth with a six-phase power supply, 175-watt TDP, one eight-pin power connector, and it's gonna retail for $599 US. $599, that's the price for the Founders Edition card, which uh, there will be a premium on. Non-Founders Edition cards are gonna start at $499. We'll just have to wait and see if those prices actually hold up when these cards are announced or released. Uh, there's also no release date uh, yet for the RTX 2070. Let's move on to the next card, which is the RTX 2080, successor to the GTX 1080. Uh, this is, again, specs for the Founders Edition card, 2,944 CUDA cores, a base of 1515 megahertz, a boost clock of 1800 megahertz with eight gigs of GDDR6 memory with a speed of 14 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus, 448 gigabits per second memory bandwidth, an eight phase power supply, a 225 watt TDP, a single six pin and single eight pin power connector with a price of 799 and non-Founders Edition cards will go for $699. Uh, September 20th is when this card officially launches. Pre-orders are available now, however. And then finally, we have the big boy, the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition at 4,352 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1,350 megahertz, a boost of 1,635 megahertz, 11 gigs of GDDR6, with a memory speed of 14 gigabits per second on a 352-bit bus, 616 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, a 13-phase power supply, 260-watt TDP, two 8-pin power connectors, with a price of, whew, you might want to sit down for this one, $1,199. Non-Founders Edition cards will run you for a cool grand. This launches on the same date as the RTX 2080 on September 20th. I believe pre-orders are also available for that card. Now some quick thoughts on this. Uh, these are definitely the highest prices that we've seen from NVIDIA for the cards belonging to these tiers. Uh, so hopefully the performance of these cards will scale with respect to, to the prices. And then finally, this is the first time that I can recall uh, the TI model being unveiled and, and released on the same date as the XX80 SKU. Um, generally, the TI model has come you know, weeks or even months well after the, the, the 80 SKU, but uh, this time they're, they're coming together. Now switching gears here, we can sort of discuss the new Founders Edition cooler, uh, the whole cooling solution, the card itself. Most of the B-roll that you see from here on out is gonna be of the RTX 2080 Ti. So uh, just bear in mind that that cooler is slightly different than the RTX 1070. It's more or less identical to the 2080, but uh, just bear in mind that these images are gonna be mostly of the RTX 2080 Ti. First of all, this is a completely redesigned card 
from the last generation, as I mentioned before. They've kind of ditched the aggressive tessellated look uh, of the last gen for a more sleek and minimal aesthetic. Uh, of course, everyone's gonna have an opinion about this. You guys feel free to drop yours in the comments. Uh, they've also done away with the blower style fan in place of dual axial 13 blade fans. Not exactly sure how big they are. They look about 100 millimeters, I could be wrong, um, but this definitely makes the card look more like an add-in board partner card as opposed to the traditional uh, FE shrouds we're used to. The fans are allegedly much quieter than a blower style fan, which makes sense uh, just because they're, they're much larger. They don't have to spin it as high of RPM and there's two of them and they have like a you know fancy blade design or whatever. So all those things combined, uh, I would imagine is gonna make uh, for a more comfortable gaming experience. Now there's a silver shroud that's kind of hugging the outer edges of both of the fans. Um, I believe it's made of aluminum. I couldn't confirm that, but it definitely looks to be uh, made of a, that material or something similar. And then there's this rather plain black surface in between the fans, which is my least favorite part of the card cosmetically. It just looks a little bit too plain and boring. You'll also notice that this black area is much larger on the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti than it is on the RTX 2070. You can tell because the, the margins around uh, the branded lettering is, uh, is spaced very differently. And that's because the 2080 and 2080 Ti's are actually about an inch and a half longer than the RTX 2070 at 10 and a half inches and nine inches respectively. The two faster cards are also slightly taller than the RTX 2070 at 4.556 inches versus 4.435 inches. You still get the green LED backlit branding on the side of the card, but now it says RTX instead of GTX to reflect the new names. And uh, it's not RGB, who knew? I I'm sure a lot of people are super disappointed um, that, uh, that it's not RGB, but who cares? Uh, it's also an open shroud card now. So previous generations had, you know, the, the typical blower fan and it was an enclosed card ejecting all the hot air out the back of the card. Now it's being ejected from both the sides and uh, also the back. Basically these new FE cards will be exhausting hot air inside of your case. I think that definitely changes things. You know, I've seen a lot of people, including myself, uh, use the older Founders Edition cards inside of small form factor cases where uh, getting heat trapped inside of a little space can be really detrimental to, to your thermals and your performance. Um, but uh, you know, people might have to look elsewhere and check out some add in board partner models that uh, feature an enclosed shroud to uh, sort of accommodate that, those scenarios. So uh, it's quite interesting. You guys also let me know what you think of all this stuff. Uh, additionally, we've got an SLI finger that's in the same position, it's in the same spot, but it's been redesigned, uh, looks kind of different here, um, unless I'm just not seeing it from the right angle, uh, but it's been redesigned with support for NVLink. So you know it's gonna be delivering 50 times the transfer bandwidth of previous technologies, and the high bandwidth SLI bridge seems to have also received a makeover. The top of the card gets the old backplate treatment, but you can see here it swaps the usual black color uh, for silver, which again, I believe is aluminum. And, and this backplate is, is unique in the sense where it actually extends to wrap around the edges of the card where it eventually meets the fans, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Um, this creates sort of a, a unibody look, which I think is a refreshing change, but uh, you guys let me know. Uh, finally, on the back of the card, we get three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, meaning we can finally do uh, 4K at 120 hertz, and uh, probably well ahead of its time still is 8K 60 hertz support, but uh, you know, I'm sure Linus will put 55 of them together and play Minesweeper on it at some point. Uh, we also get a single HDMI 2.0B and one USB Type-C port uh, for Virtual Link, which is the new open industry standard that's currently being developed to meet the power, display, and bandwidth demands for next-gen VR headsets. This is really cool because you no longer have to eat up one of your video outputs uh, to play VR. You have like a four panel setup or whatever, triple display with a companion monitor. You don't have to unplug one of those if you want to plug in your VR headset or whatever it is. So uh, that's actually pretty cool. So that is the new Founders Edition card for this first wave of 20 series Turing GPUs. What do you guys think? Love it, hate it? Somewhere in between, let me know. Also share your thoughts on those prices. What kind of performance are you expecting now that the official pricing and specs are out on the table? That's all I got for now, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech content on the way, including more coverage of this new family of GPUs. Very exciting stuff. Have a good one, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.